North Korea is one of the most mysterious and least understood countries in the world. They've remained virtually isolated for the past several decades. Very few outsiders have been allowed inside the secluded country. Today, we'll be taking a look at 15 weird facts about North Korea. Number 15. Formed in 1945. Surprisingly, the country was only formed relatively recently, in the wake of the Second World War, and it was the decisions made at that time that have led to the situation as it is today. Originally, the entire Korean peninsula was a part of one empire, which was formed in 1897. But this wouldn't last for long. In a quest for dominance in the region, Korea was annexed by Imperial Japan in 1910 and became a subsidiary for the next 35 years. Following the Japanese surrender at the end of the Second World War, Korea was split into two along the 38th parallel, with the United States occupying the southern part and the Soviet Union taking control of the north. During the following years, there was a number of attempts to help reunify the continent, but when these failed, the first respective governments were formed in 1948. Two years later, in 1950, the North attacked the South, which began the Korean War. And when hostilities ceased in 1953, an armistice agreement was signed. And still, to this day, no peace treaty has ever been agreed upon, which means the two sides are still technically at war with one another. Kim Il-sung was the leader of the government in the North from when it was first formed in 1948, and it was his son, followed by his grandson, who would inherit the leadership following his death. Number 14. North Koreans are shorter. When data first began to emerge of the physical stature of North Koreans, people immediately thought it was faked as a means of propaganda. But it's been proven time and time again that residents of North Korea are noticeably shorter than those in South Korea, by on average several inches. This is surprising, considering the genetic makeup of the two populations is identical since they all formed part of the same country within the past century. The size difference is apparent even in North Korean children, and sadly, this points to the quality of life in the country as the root cause. Specifically, its availability of food that's more problematic in the North. And according to workers at the World Food Program that's been delivering food to the country since 1995, children tend to be malnourished even within their first two years, and this has significant effects on future physical development. Today, it's estimated that at least one in three children are chronically malnourished and are stunted as a result. What makes this more apparent is the economic success of South Korea in recent decades. So not only are the North Koreans getting shorter, but the South Koreans, because of the prevalence of food, are themselves getting taller. Number 13. The Calendar The calendar is one of the most important inventions in history, as it allows people to predict the passing of the seasons, and it's also vital in the worldwide economy for everyone to know when certain events are meant to occur. While there are various different types of calendars, it's mostly the Gregorian one that's used internationally, with 12 months split into days and starting in the year when Jesus was supposedly born. Things work a little differently in North Korea, however, known as the Juche calendar. They retain the months and days, but the numbering of the years are instead based on the birthday of Kim Il-sung, the founder of the country. He was born in 1912, which is Juche year one, and everything is calculated from there. The year 2021 in our calendar, therefore, is the year 110 in North Korea, which would normally get complicated if interacting with other countries. Probably the most surprising thing about this calendar is that it only began being used in the year 1997, or the year 86, which meant that everything had to be redesigned and reprinted across the country. It's now illegal to use any other type of calendar except for in two instances. The first is in the rare time someone's communicating outside of North Korea, and the second time is when describing dates before 1912, in which case the Gregorian calendar can be used. Number 12. Kijong Dong as a part of the armistice that was agreed upon between North and South Korea following the war, a two-and-a-half-mile-wide demilitarized zone was created between the two countries. Neither side is allowed to build anything there, with the only exception to this being that each was allowed one village. In North Korea's case, this was a place called Kijongdong, which in the North is known as the Peace Village, but elsewhere is regarded as the Propaganda Village. According to the North, the place, which is full of brightly colored buildings, is run by 200 local families and has a school, a hospital, and a collective farm. But there are serious questions as to the truth of this. It's suspected that the true purpose of the village was to try to convince the outside world that life in North Korea is much better than it seems. The village looks like a welcoming place to live, and every place is wired with electricity. 
possibly in the hope that it would attract new defectors from the south. It's believed, though, that the structures are simply empty shells of homes and that the whole village is just an illusion. In further evidence of this, a number of the buildings have been fitted with loudspeakers that broadcast North Korean propaganda to the ears of those across the border in the South. And it was also the site of one of the strangest wars ever. In the 1980s, South Korea built a 320-foot or 98-meter-tall flagpole with a South Korean flag on it, which led to the North Koreans building a 525-foot or 160-meter-tall flagpole in response which for a long time was the tallest one in the world. This so-called flag war shows just how desperate the regime is to avoid being outdone by anyone with anything. Number 11. Basketball Rules One of the reasons that sport is so universally loved around the world is that there's a set series of rules that everyone must abide by, and with this level playing field, it's down to each athlete to perfect their talents. Of course, the rules may change over time, but usually you'd be able to watch a match from anywhere else and have a good idea of what's happening, even if the commentary is in a language you don't understand. Things might be a little more tricky if you were to watch basketball game in North Korea, though. Kim Jong-un is famously a huge fan of the sport, after developing a close friendship with Dennis Rodman, but it seems the dictator isn't content with the rules that the rest of the world plays with so he's made some additions of his own, and some actually make perfect sense. To begin with, and to encourage them to happen more often, because they're so crowd-pleasing, slam dunks are worth three points. And furthermore, a three-point shot that doesn't touch the rim is awarded four points. In an NBA game, it may be annoying to see a player miss a free throw, but it's certainly not catastrophic. But in North Korea, it is. Each missed free throw results in a one-point deduction, which leads to some unusual tactics, such as purposefully fouling the weakest player. Finally, in an attempt to keep the crowd on the edge of their seats, any field goal that's scored within the last three seconds of a game is worth a whopping eight points, meaning a Hail Mary throw right at the end of a game can completely overturn a healthy lead. Number 10. Elections are regularly held. Despite only having three different leaders since the country was formed, it may come as a surprise to learn that North Korea does actually hold regular elections, but just like you might expect from a dictatorship, they aren't exactly as free or fair as they are elsewhere in the world. On election day, every citizen over the age of 17 must vote. To show how loyal you are, you're expected to turn up early and join one of the extremely long queues. Once you reach the polling station, you're given a voting slip, which has just one name on it, and you place it into the ballot box. There is the option to go into a private booth if you wish, but that would undoubtedly raise suspicions. If you are brave enough to cross out the single name before voting, you're likely to be arrested on the spot. After voting, you're then expected to join the crowds of celebrating people outside the polling station to cheer on everyone who's yet to have their turn. These elections are held every five years for members of the Supreme People's Assembly, which is a legislative branch with virtually no power at all, and even Kim Jong-un himself has to be re-elected. Because of the unique way in which the system is organized, statistics are released after everything has been counted that show there's virtually a 100% turnout to vote, and unanimous support for every official that's elected. Number 9. Hairstyles for most of us, the choice of a hairstyle is an individual form of expression, but in North Korea, if recent reports are accurate, there's a limited choice when it comes to how a hairdresser cuts your bangs. In fact, there are apparently only 15 authorized styles on offer for men or women, each designed to be age-appropriate and relatively smart. Hairdressers across the country have posters inside that show which styles are allowed, and it's simply a case of picking which one you like. In a lot of ways, this makes the process a whole lot simpler than being able to choose from anything. But the punishment for doing something different is believed to be extreme and potentially ends in being sent to a prison camp. Notably absent from the list is Kim Jong-un's own haircut, which is called the Ambitious, and his wife's preferred bob cut. While this may all seem like a quirk of the system, there are darker motives behind it. In the same way that prisoners are forced to wear the same clothes and adhere to certain rules, Limiting the choice of haircut and therefore individuality can dehumanize the population and make them far more compliant. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The Country's Leader is Dead 
Following the death of his father in 2011, Kim Jong-un became the third supreme leader of North Korea. But despite the lofty title, this isn't actually the most powerful position in the land. Following the deaths of his father and grandfather, the country's constitution was changed in a way that enshrined their authority in law forever. This means that Kim Il-sung, the first of the dynasty, was the only actual president of North Korea. And when he died in his position, he was elevated to the eternal president of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, a position he still holds to this day. His son, Kim Jong-il, was never, therefore, president and held the title of supreme leader before his death in 2011, when it was announced that he would forever be known as the Eternal General Secretary of North Korea, as well as being the Eternal Chairman of the National Defense Commission. This means that despite them both being dead, they still technically hold a higher position of office than Kim Jong-un. But you can be sure that he's already decided how he should be remembered when he passes away, too. Number 7. Kwang Myung The internet is one of the most impactful inventions in history, which has given such a wealth of information at our fingertips and made communication possible like never before. The openness and freedom of the internet, however, is exactly the type of thing that dictatorships want to limit to prevent dissension. So while the technology is available in North Korea, it's very different from what we're used to. First of all, not everyone's allowed to own a computer. You have to obtain an official license before you're able to buy one. And even then, they're extremely expensive and far beyond being affordable for the vast majority of the population. With a computer or a smartphone, a very limited number of users are only able to access the worldwide internet under extreme scrutiny. But most are only able to log on to Kwangmyong, which is the country's closed intranet. There are believed to be around 8,000 different sites available, each of which have been vetted by the government and provides authorized information, some shopping services, and basic communication abilities. This allows the ruling party to keep a tight control over the online activity of all their citizens. And while this may sound outrageous to those of us used to having an open internet, there are countries that look to North Korea and are still trying to replicate this alternative. Myanmar and Cuba already have similar systems, and Iran is believed to be trying to create one of its own, too. Number 6. One of the largest militaries on Earth Because of its size and faltering economy, it's easy to think of North Korea as nothing but a minor annoyance on the world stage, apart from the increasing risk that they have access to nuclear weapons. But they've actually got one of the largest military forces on the planet. The country is believed to have a population of around 25 million people, and almost one in four of them is involved in the military. This means it's made up of almost 6 million troops on at least a part-time basis, and around 1.3 million of them are full-time soldiers. To put this into perspective, North Korea ranks just behind the United States with 1.4 million military personnel, and only India and China have more. The equipment they use has been sourced from Russia and China over the years. Not only is North Korea believed to be in possession of nuclear weapons, it's also thought that a huge amount of research has been put into chemical weapons, too. It's both the size of the army and the tools that they have at their disposal, which means it's not as simple to deal with the perceived threat of North Korea as it would initially seem. Any attempt to invade the country would require a substantial commitment by a number of countries, and that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. Number 5. Children pay for school themselves Most countries around the world see the importance of providing a good education to children, because it means that as they grow up, they'll start creating value to the economy and essentially pay back the cost of educating them in the first place. In North Korea, though, families and the children themselves are expected to fund the full costs of their education without any of it being provided by the state. What this means in practice is that when a child first goes to school, their parents are expected to provide their chair and their desk. It's not like children spend much time in the classroom, though, because despite claiming that child labor was ended more than 70 years ago, most school kids are put to work for the majority of their time to pay back the costs of running the school. These activities can include maintenance of the school itself or a range of other roles such as farming, rock breaking, scrap metal collecting, and anything else the teachers want. This means that from an economical sense, North Korean schools actually turn a profit each year, whereas just about everywhere else in the world, they're seen as some of the only institutions where it's actually okay to invest funds. Number 4. The Three-Generation Punishment Rule In most countries around the world, once we become adults, we are, quite rightly, held accountable for our actions. 
There's debate, of course, around the severity and harshness of some punishments, but the main principle is that you and you alone are charged and tried for breaking the law. Historically, some countries have taken a different approach, though, with what is known as kin punishment. This is where your family members can also be punished for your crimes, with the idea that you'll be less likely to commit an offense if the people that matter most to you may also face the consequences. Due to human rights legislation, hardly any country still does this, apart from North Korea, where they routinely enforce a three-generation punishment rule. This states that anyone convicted of serious crimes, usually ones that are political in nature, are sent to forced labor camps, and that the next two generations of their family, so their children and their grandchildren, are kept in the internment camps too. This means that the descendants of the people who stood up to the formation of North Korea at the very start are still behind bars, which is definitely an effective way to eliminate any opposition. Number 3. Nightly Power Cuts With increasing power requirements due to the technology we use, countries around the world are finding their electrical grids are under immense pressure. China, for example, is having to build hundreds of new power plants each year to keep up with demand, as the alternative is to endure blackouts. A number of countries have to schedule organized blackouts in some areas to ensure that there's enough power to go around. But in North Korea, until recently at least, the electrical supply to virtually everyone was cut off every night. One of the main reasons this problem began was that North Korea was originally reliant on power from the Soviet Union. But as diplomatic ties became more strained, this ended in the mid-1990s. Without the ability to make up for this shortfall, the lives of virtually every citizen have to revolve around daylight hours because there's simply not enough to light up their homes at night. This has led to some incredible satellite images of the region, where you can clearly see the artificial light in South Korea and China on either side, but virtual darkness across the whole of North Korea. More recently, streetlights have now been left switched on in some cities into the evenings to help with transport, but it's still believed that ordinary citizens have to make do with less than a tenth of the daily electricity as those in South Korea use. Number two, drugs are freely available. With so many restrictions and rules about what they can do and how they should live, you might imagine that recreational drugs in North Korea were highly illegal and harshly punished, but it's actually the complete opposite. Drug addiction is becoming a significant problem across the whole country, according to recent reports. And one of the main reasons for this is how easy it is to get a hold of them. It's estimated that at least 30% of North Korean citizens are addicted to meth, opium, and other substances, and there are suspicions that North Korean government itself is responsible for producing most of them. Cannabis, too, is part of daily life in the country, and while it's not as strong as other places in the world, it's apparently easier to buy than alcohol. Known as yoksam, it's classified as an oilseed crop and can be purchased for around $2 a pound from roadside stalls. It's quite common, therefore, for Chinese businessmen to buy large quantities there and export it back home where they can turn a tidy profit. Number 1. Kim Jong-il's Glass Tomb One of the most sacred sites in all of North Korea is the Kumsusan Palace of the Sun and is a huge structure that was Kim Il-sung's home until his death. His son spent a purported $900 million to convert the palace into a mausoleum, and it now covers an area of 115,000 square feet, or about 10,000 square meters. With some rooms that are more than 3,300 feet or a kilometer long, it's by far the largest mausoleum in the world that's dedicated to a communist leader. With the help of Russian experts, Kim Il-sung's body was preserved in the same way as what was done to Lenin, and is on display in the palace inside a glass sarcophagus. His head is rested on the traditional buckwheat pillow, and his body is covered in a North Korean flag. There's always a constant stream of people walking through to pay their respects. Following the death of Kim Jong-il in 2011, the palace was closed for a year for renovation works, and the Russian experts were called in yet again. And when it was ready to reopen, there was a new room next to the original, where his embalmed body was also now on display. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.